Hello friends! My name is Marina and this is Rapunzel Fiber Arts. Today we are going to be taking this bin which I have here, which is, says label me on it because I label all of my bins which are in progress spinning bins. So I have like ply me, wash me, skein me, and then this one which is label me. Um, so these yarns have been washed and are skeined up and ready for a label. So I always label weight in ounces, yardage, or length of the yarn in yards, um, and then what it is. So like this is lock spun from a sheep named Blueberry, who was a Gotland, uh, Gotland BFL mix. So I'm going to put all of that label, all of that on the label, and I will show you how I do that in just a moment. Um, we also have some commercial yarn in here from a sweater that we frogged or ripped out. Um, I have a label that goes with this, so I can use the information on this label to determine how much yardage is in each of these skeins because not all of them are full skeins. Like this one is like half the size of this one. So this is gonna be much less yardage than this. But I can use weights to determine that. And I will show you how I do that and how I label my yarns so that I know what's what. And I also, in addition to having like a label in the bag, I also have a label attached to the yarn just in case it gets gets lost from its label. I want to know what I have. So I'm going to show you how I do that today. All right, friends. So I'm here with five skeins of this commercial yarn, and I'm going to determine the yardage for each of these. And the way that I'm going to do that is take my scale and something to hold the yarn so that it, it is properly weighed. I'm going to switch it into grams because that is what the weight is on this label. And I'm going to weigh each of these skeins. So this one's 147 grams. All right, so now that I have them all weighed, I'm going to take the information on this yarn label, which tells me that per 100 grams, there is 247 yards. And so I'm going to do some pretty basic math to determine the yardage for each of these skeins. So I'm gonna multiply by 247 divided by 100 grams. And so you can see I'm taking this top number and multiplying it by this, which is without the units is, is going to be, well, I'm having a hard time explaining this. But what you do is you cancel out these grams. So cancel, cancel, because this is above this mathematically. This is a little bit of, of mathematics. I hope it's not over anybody's head. But you cancel out those grams and then multiply 147 times 247 divided by 100, and that'll give you yards. So hopefully that makes sense. We're going to do that for each of these, and that will determine the yardage for each skein. So I got my calculator, and I'm just going to do this, this math. All right, so these are our yardages 
and these are our weights for each of the skeins. Hopefully this math makes sense. I just did the same multiplication for each of these and that got me these numbers, um, which should be accurate because yardage for commercial yarns is pretty good to determine based on weight whereas hand spun you can have some variation in the thickness of your yarn whereas commercial is pretty pretty consistent so you don't have thick and thin spots or areas of the yarn so you can do it based on yardage i would not do this for commercial or for hand spun yarns um commercial yarns are much more consistent in their in their grist typically than hand spun so you can do this for commercial yarns but i would not recommend it for for hand spun so now that we have our weights and our yardage i'm going to take this which is a sheet of of tyvek paper which is waterproof when you write on it and resists tearing it's what they use for like envelope material for when you're mailing envelopes so i'm gonna get a sharpie because if i ever have to wash this yarn i don't want the cult the uh pigment of the ink to to run i would like it to stay and we are going to just start labeling this yarn. So for example, I'm going to just say 147 grams, 363 yards. Just like that. And then I'm going to cut this out, punch a hole in it, and attach it to our first skein. But first I'm going to repeat this for all five of the skeins so that I'm batching my work. It's much easier to do this in batches than it is to like individually do each individual label. So I've got all my labels and I'm just going to cut these out and then use a hole punch to make a hole next to each of them. All right, friends. So here I go, just cutting up this paper, grabbing my single hole punch, and I'm just going to punch out a hole for each of these individual yarn tags. My hole punch doesn't usually go all the way through the paper it like leaves a little tag hanging off but it doesn't prevent me from using these so it's not the end of the world I could probably sharpen it if I needed to but like I said not the end of the world and then I'm gonna take one of these ties which I've already done on this yarn take our first label which I know aligns with the first skein and just do a basic square knot like a double knot to secure that tag so now this yarn is labeled i know what it is i can put it with the other yarn like it and it is successfully labeled and if you're wondering why the weight on that particular skein is higher than the weight for the the ball which is only 100 grams and that is 147 grams of yarn i think i must have done a join in there somewhere which i did not notice when i was reskeining it so that that's why there is a different amount of different amount of yardage than would be possible if i was just using directly from a ball of this yarn. 
So here I am just attaching these yarn labels to each of the skeins and then this will be all done. All right, so now this commercial yarn is successfully labeled and we can move on to the hand spun project. All right, friends, so here I am counting yardage for this skein. Because this is hand spun yarn and not commercial with a yarn label attached to it, you have to individually go through and count each wrap in the skein. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going through and counting the total wraps, and then I'm going to multiply that by two. And then I'm going to get the length of this skein from end to end and divide that by 36 inches. And that will give me my total yardage. So because when I wrapped this, it was on a two yard skein or a two yard nitty knotty, it might be confusing as to why it's not still two yards. And that's just because when you wash yarn in warm water, sometimes it grows or poofs. This white yarn in particular was a targi fleece that I processed um, via combing. And it shrunk considerably in the dye bath. It was not 20, it was not 36 inches long, it was 26 inches long. So if I assumed that that was still 36 inches, I would have an incorrect yardage estimate. So that's why I think it's kind of important to take that extra step and do a little bit of math to determine what your accurate yardage is so that when you're working on a project eventually, you don't assume that you have more yardage than you do so you don't actually have enough for the project at hand. So I try to do this with all of my skeins. You can also reskein them, but that's a lot more work in my mind. I would rather just measure and estimate that way. So I have repeated the process with the pink Gotland BFL lock spun, and now I'm just doing some calculations with my calculator just to determine that yardage because I can't do that multiplication and division in my head. Now this is some brown targi, which I processed a long time ago, but I'm finally getting a label on. And once I wrap this up, I will make labels for each skein and get them all labeled. So that will be, that will be fantastic. All right, friends, so I have made labels for each skein, just like this, and now we are going to find one of our ties and use the strings on them to attach this label. And just like that, it is labeled. All right, friends, so I am just repeating this process for each skein, tying on that yarn label and then setting it aside. And then our yarn is labeled. Um, it has its yardage, it has its weight, and they are now completely ready to be set aside and eventually pulled out and used again. All right, friends, so we have labels on all of our skeins of yarn now. So that's how I label my yarn. I get the yardage through some calculation. I get the weight just by weighing it. 
and label it with what it is, more or less. And then once I'm done with that, I have these yarn labels, which I put all the important information on. And then that will go in the bag with the finished yarn. And I put all of the information on this. So like total weight and yardage for all of the spun yarn, um, not individual skeins because I have some, some spinning projects which are 10 skeins of yarn and having individual labels for each one is a little bit redundant when I already have each individual skein labeled with the weight and yardage. So that is what I do. Hopefully that made good sense and hopefully you learn something, you know a little bit more about the labeling process now and what information someone who's been spinning for a decade wants to include um, so that you can get a little bit of a head start on that if you're not really sure what to put on your labels. I definitely recommend getting some Tyvek paper if you don't have any. It's fantastic. It's waterproof. Um, so you don't lose your label if you have to rewash the yarn or anything like that. So I hope you had fun. I hope you have a great day and get some good crafting in. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye, friends.